once again we're here for the underground interviews um, the wonderful venue here you can it's as you guys who've been watching these videos know I've said it many a time when I was younger I was down here half drunk listening to bands across the way but the venue is fantastic we've got Paul here from Markham uh, here and other venues around Liverpool so Paul nice to meet you nice to meet you too um, first of all thank you very much for letting us use here to film the opening series of underground interviews it's, it's been amazing for us. Um, for you when working here, it, obviously it's a completely different vibe and that for you. So, what is it like day and night in working in a place like this? As crazy as it is, uh, coming here, drinking, having a good time, it's as, um, it's it's the same day and night. Yeah. Um, I suppose you see the walls and they're a bit more familiar, and oh. it you you know it's not as much of a maze when you're so about, but um, <laughs> it's still as much fun. We've got a great team, so. Yeah. Um, I mean, I remember coming here, when I was coming here. It was it, it was the iconic drop down into the basement. Yeah. So with with the upstairs being open, I. I can't recall getting through the upstairs, you know, getting it upstairs or so. So how long has that always been there or is it something? Uh, no, when Graham took over at Graham Clark, uh, when he got the building, I think um, he just wanted to open a part of it first and the bit that was nearest ready was the underground bit. As yeah. with most buildings in Liverpool, they've got an amazing underground bit. So yeah, um, yeah it's, it's, a good, it's a good space for that underground vibe yeah, you get. Um, because it feels tight, it feels close, and you know you're with your mates watching good music. That that's the the most enjoyable thing about it. But yeah, when there was more money there to build the upstairs, the upstairs got completed, and um, yeah, turned into a bar. It's quite an iconic bar as well because it's kind of square, and then you can walk all the way around it through the outside. So yeah. there aren't many other venues like this. Again, I mean the the courtyard as well. But only knowing this you know when we've come through here to get set up seeing like the courtyard as well i mean there must have if you had the pound for how many times we went to the courtyard yeah so with, with that as well um you said you, you you've got other venues as well we do we've got uh the jacaranda club which yep. is on slater street um and we've got phase one which is newly opened this summer on seal street yeah. which is an extension of the jacaranda, jacaranda club okay um jacaranda records is that still it part of the incorporated as part of the bar or is that moved separate now uh, well we've got um in the jacaranda club there's three floors so the top floor is the record store yeah. and in phase one um it's an all-in-one venue so we've got a bar a club, a, a night, a night uh, spot thing where you can have live music. Yeah. You can separate them so you can have live music in one area and then just a bar in the other. Yeah. But the whole lot incorporates a record store as well. Yeah. Um, when coming back to it, it, it here, um, I've I've read obviously it was it was stripped back and you got the, the you know the the ceiling yeah. mural, you know the the lights and the old lone wolf. When when doing this. It, how long did the process of like almost renovate down here? Because again, it looks, I don't know if it is a day night thing, but as I said, it's been stripped right back to the old bare walls. And was was that all part of the initial mindset when Brain took over? Or? Yeah, we wanted to make it a really rock and roll place to be. So not just in playing rock and roll yeah. music, but that you got that vibe that you were going into dirty underground, you know, kind of like from dusk till dawn kind of atmosphere. Yeah. And I think that like the murals we've got here and the light work we've got around the building kind of makes CBGBS look like that. It yeah. makes you feel like you're entering into another rock and roll, a bit anything anything can go type venue. Yeah, I mean we've seen that on the I've seen that on the cocktail thing. You got one call from Dust Till Dawn yeah. as well. I'm like, yeah, I think I'm gonna have to try that at some point. <laughs> um, so for you with marketing. Uh, it does sound almost all encompassing. So for you, what's your what's your day to day? You know, how's your day run really? Um, a lot of it we assess what's happened before. So I think sometimes people forget in marketing that you've got to evaluate your successes as well as your weaknesses. So yeah. then you can learn how to go forward, what worked and what didn't. Because obviously, as any venue will, you'll try and put on bands that you like, but maybe other people don't. Yeah. Um, so what works with the customers what are the customers yeah. into so we do that and then um, it's about forward thinking and how uh, what are customers into what do they want to listen to when they go on a night out and yeah. what gets them in the mood for dancing and having a good time 
Uh, so it's about putting bands in the right bands in the right venues and also make sure that the mes message is on point, that people know before they go into the club what they're going to get out of it. Yeah. So you know when you go into the Jack Club that in the basement you're going to have a nod to our past, which will be the Beatles, Skiffle Bands, that sort yeah. of thing. But then you've got a modern um, record store on the first floor. Yeah. You, uh, hopefully our job is to make sure people know that before they get in. The same with Phase One, we're all about mus new music in there, so yeah. the best of up and coming bands from Liverpool and I think you know that before you walk in which is good. Yeah um, I mean obviously you know with with all the videos and liquidation like it. Yeah. now I, I remember those you know the liquidation being a night out what you know from when I was working in bars and clubs here in Liverpool how have you brought that and evolved that to 2018? Well, liquidation is a well famous night. Everybody yeah. knows that. It. It's very famous, of course, across the Scouse people. Uh, certainly, when I first moved to this city, liquidation was the best night I yeah. had to go to. And when their venue shut, we knew it was such a good night when the bateau shut. So it had to, it had to have that same dirty feel, but um, dirty feel, but good drinks and good people, good music. So hopefully, that's what we've done when it's come here. Right, you think you just said then moved to Liverpool, so where? Where are you from originally? Other side of Manchester. Other side. <laughs> so what brought you here? Music brought me to Liverpool. The music. Yeah, I had one night out here when I was at uni and I just um I thought it was so amazing that you can walk down one street in Liverpool and you'll get a certain vibe and then the next street you'll get another vibe. And there's so many different genres that you're able to see here. Sorry. That's okay. It's all right. You, I'm right, so sorry. Paul, no, it's all right. Paula now knows everyone that drinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. We'll, we'll edit that. Um, <laughs> sorry, I thought I'd turn it on silent. No, you're yeah, okay. I will turn it on silent now. Right, so what was yours? Got a bottle of jar. <laughs> um, right, so are you saying on camera here that Liverpool's a better music scene than Manchester? I don't know if I should vocalise that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get hurt by either side. Um, it is. Let's say it. It is. It is a better music. It's a scene. different feel. Different feel. It's like a community here, yeah. and um, you don't have to travel ten miles to get to a different genre of music. Yeah. You know, you can just go next door to a different club, and um, every venue does something uniquely different in this city yeah. that you can't get anywhere else in the country. Right, I mean, again, I can't say enough how grateful we are and, you know, we're looking forward to working with you guys again on this. Um, what sets Hebe's apart still? As I said, I remember being 18-ish, maybe younger, <laughs> um, coming, you know, coming down into this basement, getting in and, you know, it, it, it being like everything you said. So again, into 2018, what for you? you know, makes Jack phase two EV still the places in your mind and obviously marketing out there to people in Liverpool and outside the city. What makes these places somewhere to come? I think that, like you said, and we're, by the way, we're really grateful that you're here. We love to work alongside it's, people. So yeah, it's yeah. great that you're Thank here. You. Um, but first and foremost, what we think we bring to each of the venues is a home and family feel. So if you if you're in Hebe Jeebies, you'll feel like you're part of the Hebe's family. Yeah. First and foremost, that's what we want, and that anybody is welcome. Doesn't matter how old you are, yeah. what you look like, what sex you are, whatever. You're welcome here yeah. once you're here, and that it's for everyone. And I think the same for Phase One and for the Jack Club that it's welcoming to everyone. But you might go to one of them for a certain genre. You might yeah. go to the other for a different feel, but hopefully we cater to everybody. Yeah, I mean, I've got to admit, I mean, when we were scouting venues and when we got here, that was a lot of what we felt. And like, Scott's walked off now, and he, I know this will be on the video. Um, but when he said, because he came here to, to look and he was speaking to you guys, and he said this was this was the one above, you know, other places we've gone to, it was like there was something about it. And, when we saw the basement, we just thought it's ideal for what we want to do. Um, last couple of questions I ask of everyone. Um, right, you love your music. Yeah. So, I'm gonna, I'm sticking you on a desert island with a record player. We're okay. going old school. Okay. Um, I'm gonna put you on there with Stone Rose's greatest hits. Okay. <laughs> and you can have three more. Uh, well, 
you've kind of nicked one of mine there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> obviously stone roses. Um, Blonde plastic letters for definite. Great choice. Um, Oasis, definitely maybe, obvious. Um, I don't know, because other brothers might take glory, might they? So, uh, maybe. Yeah. Definitely maybe definitely for maybe. me. Um, and Rumours Fleetwood Mac, again obvious, but it, it, how can we not? Yeah, it's one of the greatest. Yeah. Um, and lastly, the Stockholm question. What does Paula like on her pizza? On her pizza? Oh, right, okay. I like garlic sausage sliced with um, pineapple chunks. And don't you dare tell me pineapple is not allowed on pizza. Will row. <laughs> <laughs> We've actually got a thing where we get where the word gets beat down. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Paula has said it's been an absolute honour being here. Hopefully we can film more series of these here while we do That'd it. Be but great. It's brilliant. Thank you. House of Scouts. House of Scouts. House of Scouts Television. House of Scouts Television.